Hi guys, Ivy B here. Today I'm going to walk you through the 21 different types of home automation technologies that I use in my house and how I have them both under control and how I can uh, control them either via my voice, uh, via GPS, uh, location, uh, touch screens, uh, or all the other interaction models. Uh, i got a slide for you uh, based on that. Let's take a look. All right, here's the diagram. Uh, I know it looks complicated, but if you take a look at it in detail, it's actually pretty simple. Uh, let's take a look at the color codings. <clears throat> Gray is something that controls other uh, devices. Brown is probably what I'm guessing you're most interested in. What is the hardware uh, that I have? And, and these are just one box. For example, Z-Wave is just one box. I have a ton of Z-Wave devices. Uh, green is any pieces of software that I use, and blue is uh, internet stuff. So it could be software, it could be hardware, but it's somebody else's. It's not mine. So going down the right, um, I use Hue. Uh, I don't use a lot of Hue. I just use that for table lamps because I have not had uh, great success with that. Uh, and with table lamps, it's not that big a deal if you know because you're usually sitting right there if it doesn't fire. Um, I think my house is pretty wireless unfriendly is is what I'm learning here. Uh, I use Z-Wave. I use the VR Cop. I've stayed fully within the Leviton Vizia RF family, as a matter of fact. So I have, I don't know, 20, 25 different uh, lights. Uh, I'm sorry. I actually do have a lock. I got uh, two slog uh, Z-Wave locks that the VR Cop also uh, takes a look at. Elk. Elk is what I use instead of ADT. It's like ADT on steroids. And this is such a big topic, I'm going to create another video just on this one. Uh, but I use that for my security system, wired sensors, relays. Uh, the wired sensors, this is where I've said in other videos, uh, why have a motion sensor for your security system and a different motion sensor for home automation? Uh, that's silly. Same thing with doors or windows. And, and please, for the love of God, don't use Z-Wave um, for your security system. That's not remotely stable enough. Uh, so really the right answer is use a, uh, an awesome uh, security panel, uh, but re-tap into that panel uh, for uh, use in home automation. It also has this concept of relays, which imagine a computer controlled switch that goes on and off. That's really all a relay is. And I use that a ton for lighting. So that way I, uh, for low voltage lighting. So then what I can do is I can either have the computer control it or I can have a light switch and these things are dirt cheap. I'm also going to have a separate video just on low voltage lighting. It's that cool. Um, I have a Marantz receiver in the uh, home theater. Um, but I do use the Nuvo Concerto uh, for whole house audio. So the Marantz receiver does the, I don't know, the surround sounds and, and all the different digital Dolby's, etc. Uh, the Concerto just uh, controls, uh, I have speakers in pretty much every room of the house, I think eight or nine zones. And so this is just stereo sound. Uh, Plant Link, I have another video just on this, which is uh, why water your garden or your lawn like every two days or three days for X minutes um, if it doesn't need it. And I know some people link into the weather channel, but that's also, that's not local enough. You want to know for my yard, how's the water doing? Um, do I need to water it right now or not? Because uh, otherwise, you could, if you have a garden, you're going to kill your plants. Um, I have a Harmony Hub in the, uh, actually I have one in the bedroom and in the living room. So that controls all the various devices. Um, I have a projector screen directly under control of the home automation system, so I can raise or lower that. Um, and I'm going to have a separate slide on the wiring on this. This is complicated enough as is. Um, I have a plasma, which I actually bought before I got the projector. It's in the same room. Um, but that's kind of nice to have a projector just with the big screens. Um, I use a Nest. I got caller ID um, trapped into, you know, I can log every call into a database. Um, for irrigation, I just use a simple Rain 8 net. It's uh, pr pretty basic, but you don't need much more than that. Um, I do use wireless tags. I have another video on that one, which is about one inch square. Um, things you can stick on the wall for uh, measuring temp and humidity uh, in areas where you don't feel like running wiring. Um, I use Sonos as well. I use both the Sonos Play 1 and uh, Connect, and I'm actually going to, uh, as the Nuvo dies, I'm going to replace that with Connect Amps. <clears throat> Um, moving on then to um, car, I can check how much, well, I only use it for fuel. I have another video on this, I think. Um, you can use it for so much more than just fuel. Um, for me, the value is um, I want to know how much gas I have in the car while I'm in the house. Um, so that way I know if I have to leave early to go to work to stop the gas station on the way. Um, I do have the Roku and TiVo under control, except I'll be honest with you, I do very little with this because uh, I just like using the remote. So all this stuff that you'll see here. Um, gets fed into my home automation engine. I personally chose CQC. 
Um, I know you can use, um, I'm sure you can use Home Seer. Um, probably does, more. I, I can't guarantee it does all this stuff, um, especially some of the more esoteric stuff like the Kiwi 3, but I'm, I'm sure it, it'd be easy to extend it. Um, I've heard of uh, Home Assistant and Open Hab. Um, couldn't tell you the first thing about them. I'm sure they're wonderful. I'm sure the Vera, all these other options are wonderful. Um, I'm here really just to tell you about how I do things. Um, and if you want to do, do things slightly differently, cool. Um, just spread the gospel. Um, there are a few different internet devices that, um, uh, I'm sorry, internet pieces of software. So Spotify and Amazon Music, I control in via the Sonos. And then the weather uh, feeds directly into CQC. So I have this server. Uh, and because uh, I'm running Plex and because I'm transcoding to either a couple of Roku's, iPads, tablets, or, you know, even my phone when I'm away uh, from my house, um, I needed a beefy server to transcode on the fly. Uh, what that means is I rip all these Blu-rays. Yeah, I'm not streaming Blu-ray to my phone over 4G, right? Um, it'll transcode. Or even the Roku or even a little iPad, it doesn't need that level of quality. So I needed to get, get a monster server for that. 24 terabytes and I'm running out of space. I might just throw in another 40 terabytes. I'm, I'm not sure. So the i5, really this is for Plex to be able to transcode. Uh, and then CQC can just live on the, you know, the dregs, the crumbs left over uh, from Plex. So CQC takes almost nothing here. Um, so I have the one big server that controls all this stuff. And this stuff is, like I said, I'll, have, I'll pop up the, the wiring diagram at the end of this video. Um, for the most part, these are all wired in in some way, shape, or form. I do have some wireless devices in here. Um, how do I actually connect with these? And I didn't list the use my hands for the app because uh, obviously you can figure out you can use your hands to do this. Um, but I can control this. Uh, via all these devices you'll see here, I can control, I can ask either via my voice, um, NFC, uh, automated via location, GPS on my phone, or if this, then that. Um, I'm not a huge if this, then that fan, by the way. It, it takes like 8, 10 seconds to get anything done, um, which is fine for some things, but for most things in my house, you, you can't have an 8 second, 10 second response time, if, if at all. All right, so let's start it with voice, because that's where I suspect a lot of you guys might be interested in. Voice can either come into the Amazon Echo, which either will go to smart things to control the z-wave or the amazon echo will talk to cqc um, or a voice can come into my uh, moto 360 smartwatch with autoware which comes into tasker to cqc or finally you know using your voice on your um, android device itself you go auto voice to tasker to cqc um, obviously i left the sonos uh, in here you can control things directly as well uh, for NFC, I use an app called Trigger because that has a Tasker plugin. So then what you do is you, uh, you know, you tap your phone on the wall with the NFC chip. Trigger picks it up. It tells Tasker, hey, something just happened. Tasker goes to tell a CQC. Um, I happen to use uh, RDP to, uh, on my phone to um, control, to take a look at the CQC screens. That's just the method of rendering. There is an app as well uh, called Tariva. Um, it's not the best, um, so I honestly I, I've just stuck with RDP. And the nice thing about Tasker is then it also has um, location based, so I don't even have to do anything if the GPS signal figures out I'm you know it's in the evening and I'm a couple of miles from my house, um, odds are I'm coming home. And so it can fire off Hey Vivex about to come home without me having to do a darn thing. And what'll happen is the Tasker will realize this. It'll tell CQC, and then all my all my actual logic for everything is stored inside a CQC as well. Um, the reason I like that is there's not like it's all point and click. Uh, there's not a lot of programming involved to do any of these things. Um, on the iPhone, um, iPhone doesn't have a concept called Tasker, so it doesn't do. Um, three of the people in the house have iPhones. I'm the schmuck with the Android, so. Um, they all they do is they take a look at the CQC viewer and they control the screens that way or they take a look at the Sonos app Same thing with the laptop um, So that's how all this stuff is connected um, I'm gonna pop up the next slide that just talks real quickly about the wiring I'm not gonna go through it because this honestly this video is already getting to be long enough uh, We'll have another video just talking about the wiring And I'm going to leave this up for one sec so you guys can pause this and take a look at it. Uh, this is a pretty 
complicated diagram just in and of itself. You'll see here I tried to indicate what's USB, what's RS-232. Um, not every device on the prior page is on here. It's a red. This is diagrams are already complicated enough. Um, so if you have any questions, feel free to ask either in the uh, comments below on the video, or I'm going to post a link to a uh, thread over on the CQC forums um, if you want to uh, ask there. Thanks for watching.